let me make sure I'm live in the right spot. Okay. Looks like I'm live in the right spot. What is happening now? Let me know if you can see me, hear me. Hi. How's everyone doing today? I am going to talk tonight about energy manipulation in your craft. So we are on a little series of five episodes where we talk about the foundations of witchcraft and tonight is energy manipulation I want to welcome everyone who's watching live and everyone who's watching on the replay please say hello let me know you're here so that I can reach out and connect with you okay I'm gonna tell a little story this is the tale of the Whispering Grove. Once, in a remote forest, nestled deep in the heart of the wilderness, there stood an ancient grove known as the Whispering Grove. The Whispering Grove was a place of enchantment and wonder, where the trees themselves seemed to come alive with a vibrant energy. Now, in this mystical forest, there lived a skilled earth witch her name was Ilara. She had spent years honing her craft, learning to connect with the natural world and harness the energies that flowed through it. Her mastery of earth magic was renowned far and wide. One crisp autumn morning, Ilara received a message from a neighbor, neighboring village. They were in desperate need of her expertise. A massive oak tree known as the elder tree had been struck by lightning during a violent storm. Tree roots were entwined with the life force of the village and its withering branches were causing crops to fail and illness to spread. The villagers feared the loss of their beloved tree would bring ruin to their community. Ilara, carrying her wooden staff adorned with intricate runes, set forth to the village. She arrived at an elder tree its once mighty branches, now frail and brittle. As she approached, she could feel the sorrow and despair radiating from the tree. Ilara knew that the only way to save it was through the art of energy manipulation. With great reverence, Ilara began her work. She closed her eyes and reached out her hands, feeling the pulsating energy of the earth beneath her feet. She connected with the roots of the elder tree, sensing its life force and the pain that it had endured. She chanted ancient incantations. Ilara visualized a flow of vibrant green energy coursing through the tree's roots. She called upon the spirits of the earth, asking for their assistance. Slowly, but surely, the withered branches of the elder tree began to regain their vitality. Leaves unfurled, and a sense of life returned to the grove. But Ilara didn't stop there. She continued to channel her energy into the tree, reinforcing its connection with the land and the village. The whispering groves seemed to come alive, with the trees around her swaying gently as if in approval. A hours passed, and the sun dipped below the horizon. The elder tree stood once again as a mighty centennial. Its branches reached high into the sky, and the air was filled with sweet scent of blooming flowers. The villagers rejoiced, their gratitude overflowing. Ilara knew that the energy manipulation she had performed was not just a display of power. It was a sacred act of harmony with the earth. She had tapped into the very essence of the Whispering Grove, proving that earth magic was not just about spells and rituals, but about a deep connection between a witch and her natural world. With the elder tree restored, the village flourished, the Whispering Grove remained a place of wonder and enchantment, and a testament to the magic of the earth and the skilled hands of the earth witch, Ilara. 
I'm Angela. Thank you for joining me today. I am a certified intuitive life coach and I am a transformational earth magic and manifestation mentor. And the purpose of this talk tonight is to explore the, the fascinating world of energy manipulation and witchcraft, offering some insights and practical knowledge that can empower you on your, your craft, on your journey. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about the essence of energy and witchcraft and its significance in magical practices. We're going to talk about insights into the diverse ways energy is uh, perceived and utilized in different kinds of mag magical traditions. And we're going to talk about various types of energy commonly harnessed in witchcraft, such as elemental energy, lunar energy, or your personal energy. And we're going to talk about the unique qualities and attributes of each energy type. We'll explore some techniques for manipulating energy, including visualization, meditation, ritual work, and spellcraft. And we're going to just we're going to talk about how to apply these techniques in your magical practice. Understanding the energy in witchcraft. Let me just make sure I'm not missing any comments. Hi, Leslie. Awesome. At its core, energy is the life force that flows through all living things, connecting us to the natural world and the unseen realms. Think of it as the invisible threads that bind us to the universe, currents of power that weave through our spells and rituals. Energy is not a concept unique to witchcraft. It's a fundamental aspect of the universe itself. In witchcraft, we learn to tap into and manipulate this energy for various purposes. Everything is energy. So why is energy so significant in our craft? Energy is the fuel of magic. It is the catalyst that transforms our intentions into reality. When we work with energy, we are essentially partnering with the forces of the universe to manifest our desires and intentions. In spell casting, for example, we infuse our intentions into energy, shaping it with our will and the purpose that we have. And this energy goes out into the world to create change like ripples in a pond. Energy in witchcraft connects us to the natural world and fosters a deep sense of harmony with the earth and the elements, allowing us to be in tune with the cycles of nature. On a spiritual level, working with energy can lead to profound personal growth. It opens doors to heightened intuition, psychic abilities, and a deeper connection with the divine. Energy work can be used for healing and balance, both within ourselves and in the world around us. It promotes harmony clears blockages, and restores equilibrium. So in essence, energy and witchcraft is the bridge between the physical and the spiritual. It's a tool that allows us to weave our intentions into the tapestry of existence and this, and this experience that we are co-creating here. As we continue on this journey today, you'll discover how to tap into this vast, vast reservoir of energy. To, you'll un understand its different forms and you'll learn how to harness its power in your own magical practice. Um, let's continue by discussing how energy is perceived and understood in, its, in the various kinds of uh, magical traditions um, in some historical context and, and we'll talk about some examples too. So energy is perceived and understood in very in many different magical traditions and in each one they have their unique approaches to how they deal with energy. But one common thread is the recognition of the interconnectedness of all things. In Wicca, for instance, energy is often referred to as the life force or the power of the divine. It's seen as a universal flowing energy that connects all living beings and the cosmos. In Druidry, energy is closely linked to the natural world with an emphasis on the spirits of the trees, stones, and the land itself. They believe in tapping into these energies for healing and wisdom. In Hoodoo and root work, energy is perceived as a dynamic force found in herbs, roots, and curios. Their tradition often focuses on manipulating these energies through charms and rituals. Historical context plays a significant role in shaping these perspectives. For example, ancient Egyptians believed in the Ka, a vital energy that could be harnessed for magical purposes. In India, 
the concept of prana or chi is foundational to its various spiritual practices, including yoga and Ayurveda. This life force flows through all living things. There are just a few examples. Um, the world is incredibly magically diverse. Um, what's fascinating is how these different traditions have developed their own methods and to tap into manip and manipulate energy. And by studying these various traditions, we can gain a broader perspective on energy manipulation and recognize the common thread that unites us all. The recognition that energy is the heartbeat of magic. As we go deeper today, we'll talk about techniques inspired by different traditions and hopefully we can give you some ideas to enrich your own magical practice and your understanding of energy. So whether you're drawn to the old traditions or forging a unique path all on your own, remember that the essence of energy remains constant. It's a force that binds us to the mysteries of the universe, waiting for us to unlock its secrets. In the next part of our journey, um, we're going to talk about the commonly harnessed magic, um, the commonly harnessed types of energy in witchcraft. Um, the first type I'd say would be ele elemental energy. So elemental energy is rooted in the natural world where earth, air, fire, and water are building are the building blocks. So each of these elements possesses unique qualities and properties. Earth energy is grounded and stable. It's associated with the physical realm and prosperity. Air energy is free spirit spirited. It's intellectual. It fuels thought and communication and creates change. Fire energy is passionate and transformative. It embodies willpower and creativity. And water is emotional and intuitive. It flows through matters of the heart and it represents dreams. Next, we have lunar energy. It draws power from the phases of the moon and the moon cycles influence magic. In a new moon, that's a time for new beginnings and setting intentions. We have one of them coming up next week. In a full moon, that's the peak of, of power for manifestation and completion. A waxing moon is good for growth and attracting desires. And a waning moon, moon is a good time to release, to banish, and to let go. Another vital source of energy that people often overlook is personal energy. Personal energy is the life force within us. It's shaped by our emotions, our thoughts, and our intentions. Understanding and harnessing your own energy is a foundational step in witchcraft. Grounding, connecting to the earth to replenish energy, centering, achieving inner balance and focus, and shielding, protecting your energy from external influences are just a few examples of the many types of energy used in witchcraft. Each type has its unique characteristics and can be harnessed for specific purposes. The key to energy manipulation lies in knowing when and how to use these energies to amplify your magic. For example, when you're performing a spell for financial abundance, you might draw upon earth energy to ground your intention and fire to fuel your determination. Or during a full moon ritual, you would work with the potent lunar energy to amplify the power of your intentions. Personal, personal energy, too, plays a crucial role here. It's the driving force behind your spell work, shaping it with your emotions and your desires. As we continue, you're going to learn some practical te techniques to tap into these energies, to understand their nuances a little bit more. And... Um, to be able to maybe start to weave them into your own spells and rituals. So remember, as a witch, you're a master of these energies. By understanding them, you gain the ability to shape the world around you, to manifest your desires, and to create change in accordance with your will. I'm going to pause for a moment and just check on the comments. Hi, Yolanda. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Anyone else around? How's everybody doing tonight? Just want to make sure there wasn't any questions. Okay, so let's get to the fun part. The exciting part, the practical methods. So, 
these are key factors that can help you to become a skilled practitioner in your craft. You want to talk about, we definitely want to talk about the ethical considerations while manipulating energy. So we must pause for just a moment to reflect on a vital aspect. There's ethics involved when it comes to energy manipulation. The way we use energy has profound consequences, not only for ourselves, but for the world around us. Witchcraft and magic come with a set of ethical responsibilities. They guide our actions. Um, because the way we use energy affects others. It's not just ours, you know? Um, so these responsibilities need to be kind of rooted in the understanding that energy is a powerful force and it can shape reality. So we have to watch because we don't want to do harm and we don't want to intrude on someone else's free will. So this means using your skills and intentions for positive and constructive purposes. Energy can be harnessed to heal, to protect, and to bring about positive change. Respect for free will is important. Each person has their own path. Um, they have their own choices to make. And we have no business making their choices for them, even if we think it's what's best for them. Um, Watching someone make a hard decision, making the wrong decision or what we believe is the wrong decision, a decision that may hurt them more, while it seems kinder and that we're doing them a favor to tell them to make the right decision, what we should, what, what we should have them do, or to step in for them, we are not on their path. They have lessons that they have to learn, and we can't and shouldn't, we shouldn't get involved in that. They have their own path to walk. So we really can't, we have to respect people's free will. So I, I believe it's essential to respect the free will of people and not interfere with their decisions through the act of energy manipulation. It's one thing to tell them what you think. It's another thing to take their free will away from them. Avoiding using energy to control people against their will. Seeking um, consent when we are performing energy work on someone else, um, especially in healings, um, but also in readings and things like that. Um, we want to respect natural, the natural balance of things, right? And so everything that we, that we want, our intentions, should always be for the good of all. Um, energy manipulation is a partnership with the forces of nature and it's important to work in harmony with the natural world acknowledging that everything's interconnected everything is one avoiding depleting natural resources is a big one or harming the environment and giving back to nature through your offerings and having eco-friendly practices um, now ethics can also extend to accountability as practitioners, we must take responsibility for our actions and their consequences. As far as um, a spell or energy work, um, if it has unintended negative consequences, there's it's your responsibility to take steps to rectify it. If we are continuously activate, uh, evaluating our intentions and motivations through our magical practice, there's less of a chance of of this kind of thing happening. Continuous learning and growth is always part of the journey. It will always be part of the craft. Um, there will never be a time where we know enough and there's not anything else to learn. And that goes for personal growth, it goes for your craft, and it goes for pretty much everything else in life as well. But in the world of energy manipulation, the ethics are evolving as well, and we gain wisdom and experience as we go. So. There is nothing wrong with practicing. You cannot do it wrong, but you want to be mindful of certain things while you're at it and you learn as you go, as long as you're willing to watch your intentions at all times and to make sure that you rectify anything that has ill intent, that has unintended consequences that you didn't prepare for. Um, be open to feedback. Be open to self-reflection. Have a way of keeping track of what you do, when you do it, how you do it, what your intention is. So keep it all written down in a journal and then go back and look, you know, look over it 
and watch the way you say things, the words that you use. Seek guidance from mentors, from fellow practitioners. There, it's important. It's important because energy has a ripple effect. The energy that you release into the world will influence and balance not just your life, but the lives of others and the natural world. And by practicing energy manipulation, we contribute to a world where magic is a force for good, where our intentions align with the greater good, and there's a natural balance, and it's respected. So remember that your power comes with a responsibility and that the choices that you make in your magical practice have a profound impact on the world around you. Let's get into some of those practical ex exercises that I talked about earlier. Grounding and centering was the first exercise that I talked about earlier. Grounding. Um, they both help you to connect with the Earth's energy, finding stability, finding balance. It's a practice that can be done anywhere at any time. Um, let's do this together for a moment just to show you what it's like. Find a comfortable seat with your feet flat on the floor, your hands resting in your lap, and just close your eyes for a moment and take a few deep breaths, relaxing your body. Imagine roots growing from the soles of your feet sinking deep, deep into the earth. Feel the earth's energy rising up through these roots, filling you with a sense of stability and strength. Now visualize a bright ball of light at your core, at the center of your being, and it's getting brighter and brighter. As you inhale, Draw the energy up from the earth, through your roots, up your legs, into your body, and into that ball of light. Take a few breaths and do this. Pull the energy up from the, the center of the earth, through the roots, into your legs, up into your body, and into the ball of light. And with each breath, it gets brighter and brighter. Now, as you exhale, you're going to release any tension or ne negativity back into the earth where it can be transformed. Now we're going to continue this cycle of drawing the earth energy on the inhale and releasing on the exhale for just a few moments. It's a simple practice. When you're ready, you can open up your eyes. Do you feel more grounded and centered? How do you feel? Do you feel more connected to the earth? I find when I do that, I am less in my head and more in my body, which is good because then I tend to not overthink as much. Grounding and centering is a practice that you can use daily to find balance and stability, to get you out of your head. It's especially useful when before or after intense energy or even energy manipulation rituals. Um, these tools are to connect with energy, to shape it, and to bring about positive change. If we embrace them with an open heart and an open mind. Here are my top tips for having the right tools and resources as you practice energy, energy manipulation. You want to practice regularly, like any skill, energy manipulation comes from potent with practice. It becomes more potent with practice. Um, dedicate a little bit of time each day, even if it's just a few moments, to connect with energy and to hone your abilities. Keep a journal, like I said earlier. A magical journal is your companion on this journey. Record all of your experiences, your thoughts, your observations, and it helps you track your progress and to, stop, dis, to see the patterns. Um, learning from others, guidance and inspiration from experienced practitioners 
online communities, workshops, mentors that are willing to wear, share their, their wisdom and insights. And experimenting. Don't be afraid to explore and adapt these techniques to fit your style. Witchcraft is a living, evolving practice, and your intuition is a valuable guide on your journey. Trust it. Trust your intuition. It's a powerful tool. Learn to trust it. It leads you to the most profound discoveries. Um, some resources I will drop in the comments below this video for anyone who wants to check them out. I have a couple books that I would recommend. I have a couple um, websites that I would recommend. But visit your local metaphysical or occult shops. They often have books and tools and resources as well as opportunities to connect with like-minded individuals. So these kinds of experience and these kinds of tools mixed with your own personal experience are what's going to guide your journey uh, going forward. So does anyone have any questions? Hey, Tina, how's it going? Anyone have any questions tonight, ladies? Okay, well, if no one has any questions, I'm just going to quickly summarize, and then we'll get off of here. It's almost dinner time here. So, what did we cover tonight? We covered... Energy is the life force, and it's the force of, of energy in our craft, and it connects us to the natural world and empowers our magical practices. We explore different types of energy, from elemental to lunar to personal energy, with its unique qualities and different properties. We delved into practical methods of energy manipulation, visualization, meditation, ritual work, and spellcraft. We emphasized the ethical responsibilities that come with manipulating energy and using our skills for positive purposes, um, respecting the natural balance of things. We experienced energy firsthand through grounding and centering. We discussed tips and resources for further exploration and practice. Now, as you continue your journey into the world of energy manipulation and in your energy, your energy practice, your witchcraft practice, remember, in the hands of a skilled witch, energy is the brush, and the universe is the canvas. Is the canvas. Paint your world with the magic that resides within you. Embrace the magic within you, for you are the weaver of spells, the conduit of energy, and the keeper of ancient wisdom. May your path be illuminated with the light of knowledge and the love of the craft. Thank you once again for joining me on this magical journey tonight. May your practice be filled with wonder, growth, and endless possibilities that are out there. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you soon.